Penumbra Black Plague Game Thoughts. So, we find out that the whole thing is basically the Borg. Except, you know, not really aggressive. They're just defending themselves. I do quite like the twist that, you know, I am not the invader here. You are. You know, I just came here and I've just, I've been keeping away from people, but you keep finding me and, you know, trying to take me back. You know, that whole, you know, with the perspective, I like that. You know, it's, you know, why did we have to harbor the power of the turn gate? And I like, you know, that whole thing of, it's being called the turn gate because that's what the, Greenlandic people called it because they thought it was a demon. You know, that sort of thing always gets classified by what, you know, Christians would call it a demon, Inuit would call it Turngate, so on and so forth. I like the tests that he, it, them, puts you through there at the very end because, you know, it's not just wits, it's, you know, are you willing to work together, are you willing to sacrifice, you know, are you going to kill the Turngate infested mutant, or are you going to, you know, use him to open the door? Are you going to let the other one die, or are you going to prevent him from killing himself, then kill yourself, and then, you know, open the door as the other one? Did anybody else get a slight Wolfenstein 3D, you know, end of the very first chapter flashback when they walked out through the flowers there. It just seemed a lot like that. I briefly pondered if, since the Turngate was willing to talk to you, if it shouldn't have been more, you know, why has it been trying to kill you all this time? I, briefly pondered, but really it didn't know if you were going to be receptive and, you know, it was only once you had cured yourself of Clarence more and later that, you know, you could communicate with the hive mind. So, you know, that does make sense. It's not, you know, it didn't know for sure if you were going to. And I really like that, you know, that's kind of, that's when it really becomes this classic horror fantasy story. I'm writing this to tell you that I got a letter telling me to do this. You know, it's, it's that kind of circular thing, you know. Some years ago, this whole thing started because I found an old artifact or, you know, and I've been doing this and that, and now I'm writing to you to tell you, don't use that, you know. And then it has that thing with, you know, I'm breaking my promise. Kill them. Kill them all. And at first, I was a little averse to that ending because it's kind of like, dude, you just went through tests showing, you know, where you had to prove that you could work together, that you could, you know, sacrifice yourself. <sighs> and now you're just going to decide to kill them, but he's not making the mistake that his father did. The mistake his father made was telling someone new about this sort of thing, you know, the moment that any human being knows what's going on there, someone's going to come by, you know, and he's hoping, you know, Philip is hoping that if he says, kill them, which we don't even know if, if it's possible, you know, would, if it's like a virus or airborne or something like that, wouldn't it just, you know, survive? I don't know, maybe he's talking about killing the hosts. It's not a perfect plan, you know, I don't think it's supposed to be. He is just a human being after all, Philip. But yeah, you know, the moment someone knows about it, you know, Philip hadn't, his father didn't write, Come, come see me, son. No, he wrote, destroy everything you've just found. You know, destroy all these notes. Do not come. You know, make sure no one ever shows up here. So, yeah. 
and that was a really, really cool ending, you know, it, it was a good twist, and it is kind of, yeah, I'm not really sure how it's going to be picked up on, you know, where the expansion pack is going to go, but whatever. I really love the way this plate tricks on your mind, you know, with Clarence, you know, you realize, crap, I'm infected with the virus, you know, it's like, you come down there and then you read, by the way, there's, excuse me, a virus down here, you know, okay, I hope I'm not infected, and then, you know, after you go through the alternate dimension, you know, and Clarence starts talking to you and all that, then you read, oh, apparently, you know, you go through an alternate reality kind of thing, and, you know, you hear voices, okay, I'm infected, and then, you know, with Clarence toying with your mind, you know, saying, oh, look, I can make this appear differently, you know, he throws, you know, spider, spiders and dogs at you, like hallucinations, and then the the very pinnacle of it, the very most brilliant was when you are going to Amabel Swanson, I didn't even know Amabel was a name, and suddenly you're being attacked by one of the Turngate infected, you know, you use that trap with the chain and the box to kill, and that also works really well because you're not seeing the death, you know, and then you turn around and it's her, and it's like, I thought you liked her, total Willem Dafoe voice, you know, which is smart because he does have a bit of a skill, sound like a complete psychopath, and yeah, that was just, I didn't see that coming, I, and it's the sort of thing that I've really wanted horror games to do, you know, to really have this thing with, you know, perspective and perception. You know, if if it looks like a monster and you think it's self-defense, you know, because he had control of your senses, he made you think that the turn gate was hurting you, you know, and yeah, that whole, <laughs> and I like how Philip can't even touch it after, touch her body afterwards, you know, I was thinking maybe there's like something underneath her or something, you know, and it was just, I can't, you know, and you know, he picks up the key, you look at it, and it's like, that was the key she was carrying when, you know, you can almost sense his head going like that, you know, it's just, oh man, what did I do, you know, finally I meet someone, still human and still alive down here, and I kill her after she tries really hard to save me, and then they really ram it right in there, they really twist the rusty jagged edge by having her, you know, post-mortem you find this note from her where it says, you really tried, I know that, and thank you for that, you know, yeah, oh, don't thank me, please. That was really good. And the the cure, you know, you finally, you combine all the things, and Clarence is like, no, no, stop, you know, and also real brief, I love when he makes, like, doors disappear, you know, and, and then it, they're near the very end where he's, like, slurring your, blurring your vision, and slurring your speech, and he's, like, making you... <laughs> You know, he's trying to make you not realize where the doors are, or where the right path to go is. And Philip is, like, struggling through it. I love that they actually put that in a video game, because that's... You know, you need to make it very visual if it's a video game or a film. To have that kind of struggle, you know, Philip is struggling to maintain his sanity, maintain his perception of what is 
reality because we do have a grounding in reality. You know, when you wake up from a dream, you're like, oh, that was only a dream, you know, and as fun as it can be to go further into, you know, semi-existentialist, you know, toying with the idea that, oh, but maybe when you're waking up, that's the real dream and all that. In reality, you know, most of us do have that kind of, you know, we can tell, you know, okay, that was the dream. You know, it, we don't feel like, oh, I'm remembering stuff that I just had forgotten long ago, you know. So, you know, he fights and he fights and he fights and he, you know, manages to see, okay, it is this way, and then he's back at the machine. Clarence is just, you know, trying so hard to get get you to not, and then, you know, you get it out of, and for the first time you really see things clearly. It's almost like you're no longer in the mine. Almost, not quite. And it is this kind of, you know, it's been affecting your vision, your perception throughout, you know, because you were pretty much infected throughout this entire episode of the game, of the story. So, you know, suddenly you can see things clearly, and then Clarence has form, you know, and then they, you know, destroy him because he's now too much of an individual, and they're commie bastards, the hive. <laughs> Kidding. So, uh, I suppose that pretty well covers it. One thing I had to wonder, why, if the hive infected turngate mutant people have telepathy, why is there... Is there ever more than one chasing you? I mean, I'm not sure I even saw more than one at the same place before when they, you know, exterminate Clarence. That, yeah. I would think that if they actually had telepathy and, like, control, they would you know, round you up relatively quickly. But, anyway, I, I like the story okay. It, it's nice that it, this does provide answers. I suppose it's sort of like, if you want answers, play Black Plague. If you want hints and a vague mystery, play, you know, Overture. Because a lot of the information does appear in both games. Yes, I suppose that's it. Hope you enjoyed it.